So let's spend just a few minutes praying together about uh, what's next, because this service is about prayer. So let's let's spend just a few minutes praying. God, we thank you that you are with us right now. We've spent time worshiping you. We love you. And you say just ask. And so we ask. We ask for you to fall on us, for your power to fall on us. We ask for your presence to be felt by each one. We ask for you to work in mighty ways today as Julie comes to to give us some, your message, Lord. Just work through her mightily. We ask that you would work in each of our hearts. Bring transformation. Draw us close to you. We love you, Jesus. Help us to be open and willing. Help us to be surrendered. Help us to repent of things we need to repent from, Lord. Give us clean hearts. Help us to be ready for you as you come. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Haven is going to come up and read the scripture for us this morning. Thank you, Haven. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are in bed. I can't give up and give you an get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread, because of the friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Thank you, Haven. Did anybody see the uh, storm last night? Yes. Did you see the lightning? Did you hear the thunder? What an awesome display of God's power. Grace and I stood out on the front porch and just watched it come and go. And at one point, the lightning was so close, it just flashed right across the sky, and we thought, oh, no, maybe we should be inside. <laughs> what an amazing thing. Let me get myself situated here. Aben was a professional with the microphone. I've given today's message a long title. I wasn't a writing lit major for nothing. <laughs> Building an intimate relationship with God through prayer. But the point is simple. The best way to know and be known by the Lord is to listen to him and to talk with him. Lisa prayed beautifully for us. Uh, let's just take one more moment to address the Lord directly. Jesus, please reveal yourself to us this morning as we look at your word. We know that your power is perfected in weakness, and I pray that you would get me out of the way and that I would only be a conduit for your strength, your power, and your glory. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. If you would, turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, very first part of God's word.
this wind is very refreshing, but it's also uh, turning the pages in my Bible. Okay, so Genesis chapter 1. Here we see that God spoke creation into existence. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light. Verse 6, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Verse 9, and God said, let the water under the sky be gathered in one place. 11, God said, let the land produce vegetation. 14, God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky. 20, and God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. And God said, let the land produce living creatures. God said, God said, God said. There was language from the very beginning, before God even created anyone with whom to speak. And then, with an intimacy even deeper than words, he breathed life into the first man, Adam. Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into his nostrils, the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And then God made the first woman, Eve, from Adam's rib. Genesis 1.27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Part of what it means to be created in God's image is to listen in silent, awesome communion to him and then to speak informed by his glory, to speak out loud and in our thoughts. God created us with the ability to communicate in the depths of our souls and with words. Language was given to us humans through Adam and Eve as a birthright at the dawn of creation before sin entered the world. And the highest use of language is prayer, simply listening to and speaking with God. Prayer is a part of our DNA as humans, a God-given way to enter into direct communion with him. The first prayers belong to Adam as he was first filled with God's life-giving breath, and then, as he listened to God's initial command, for listening to God is one of the most important elements of prayer. Here's the first prayer, Genesis 2.16, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. This communication was initiated by God because of his love for Adam. Adam listened and obeyed for a time. The next prayer belongs to both Adam and Eve as Adam prays a blessing over his newly created wife. Genesis 2:23. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Adam prayed over Eve with thanksgiving. Also, Adam told Eve about God's earlier commandment, warning her not to eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. We know this because she repeats it later to the serpent. And so we see that it did not take long for Adam and Eve's innocent, intimate relationship and communion with God and each other to be corrupted. Satan, in the form of a snake, perverted language and uttered the first lie to Eve. First, he asked a loaded question. Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And Eve repeats God's command, but imperfectly. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Then comes the lie. Satan says, you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God 
knowing good and evil. Catastrophically, both Adam and Eve listened to Satan, gave in to pride, disobeyed God, ate the forbidden fruit, and with their first sinful act, the door was open to all kinds of other terrible sins. Sadly, their sin is also ours, passed down through the ages from generation to generation. One of the consequences of Adam and Eve's disobedience was that intimate communion with God, prayer, became awkward and difficult. Pride and shame erected a wall between them and God. Also, God's gift of language was corrupted. When we allow unconfessed sin to rule us, we experience the same kind of distance from God Adam and Eve did, and our prayers are lifeless. Thankfully, prayer is only flawed on our end. Even though the perfect harmony with God that Adam and 